Hi everyone and welcome back to my series on how to make an action RPG in Godot 4. In this episode, we will create the first enemy for our game, animate it using an animated sprite 2D, and make it move back and forth between two points. So let's get started. First, let's create a new scene for our enemy. The root node should be a character body 2D, just like our player. For this enemy, we won't need any custom animations later on, so instead of using a sprite2d and an animation player to animate it, we will just use an animated sprite2d. So let's add one of those to our enemy scene. Next, let's go find a sprite sheet we can use. I feel that slimes are almost a must in this genre, or at least a classic enemy, so I'm adding the slime.png to the project. Now we are ready to create the move animations for our slime enemy using the animated sprite 2D node. Click to select the node and then go find the sprite frames properties. Then go click where it says empty and select new sprite frames. To select our newly created sprite frames, we then click on it. This should also open up the sprite frames menu at the bottom of the screen. If you can't find this menu, then make sure that you have selected the animated sprite 2D node and then click at the bottom of the editor here where it says sprite frames. Let's start by adding frames to the default animation here. Our frames are stored in a sprite sheet. We can add these frames using the add frames from sprite sheet function here. And then open the file with our sprite sheet. This then opens a menu where we can select and add multiple frames to our animation. I'm thinking this first animation should be for the down movement. So I click and drag to select the four sprites in the first column of the sprite sheet. If the default separation of the sprites isn't correct, then go take a look at the properties in the top of the menu. The first two specifies how many columns and rows are in the sprite sheet, and the next two, what the size of each sprite is. Once you have selected the sprites you want to add, then go click the Add button. I'm also quickly changing the name of this animation to Walk Down. I know that slimes might technically not be walking, but it can be useful to keep the animation names the same between characters in a game, whenever the animations are similar, of course. Now that we are done with the first animation, let's continue to add the other three movement animations in the same way. You can click here to add a new animation, and then just repeat the steps from before for the three remaining animations. After creating the animations, I click and drag the animated sprite to make sure it's above the position mark. Remember that this is important for Y sorting later on. In the inspector menu, you can also choose between animations and cycle between the frames. This can be useful for making sure that the sprite is positioned correctly in the scene. And now, I think it's time to save our new enemy slime scene. I'm creating a new folder for enemies. And then I'm also quickly renaming the root node of the slime scene. And now let's go see what our new enemy will look like in our game. Click and drag the slime scene into the world scene, and then go to the scene tree and move it so it becomes a child of the tile map and a part of the Y sorting. It can be difficult to align the slime to the tile grid like this. If that is something you want, you can choose to use Grid Snap here. And if you don't like the size of the grid, you can change it by using the snapping options. Okay, so it's definitely more fun if our slime can move. So let's go add a script to the slime scene and start working on getting it to move. To start with, we're going to make the slime move three tiles down, then back up to its start position, then back down and so on. We want the enemy to move between two points. So the first thing I will do is to add 
variables to store the start and end position. In the underscore ready function, I then set the start position to equal the position of the slime and the end position to be three times the height of one tile below the start position. Notice that I made a small mistake here. It should be plus and not minus. I'm correcting the code in a moment. Next, we create a function for updating the slime's velocity. The move direction is a vector going from the current position to the end position. And for now, let's just set the velocity to equal the move direction. Finally, from the physics process function, we then first update the velocity and then move the slime using the move and collide function. Let's save and test the game. Okay, the first thing here is that the slime is moving up and not down. Well, this is because of my little mistake from before. The second thing to notice is that the slime's speed isn't constant. This is because we just set the velocity to equal the move direction, which changes based on how far the slime is from the end position. Let's fix my mistake from before and also try to set the velocity to the normalized version of move direction. Well, this fixed the previous problems, but now it moves super slowly. Let's add a speed to the slime in the same way as we did to the player, and then use it when we set the velocity. This looks a bit better, but the end position is a bit far down for us to really see what's going on. So I'm quickly moving the instance slime in our world a bit up and then test again. Now we can better see that the slime is bouncing up and down after it reaches the end point. This happens because it moves a bit too far and then moves a bit too far back and so on. One way to solve this is to add a limit. When the distance between the slime and the end is less than this limit, then we move the slime directly to the end position and set the move direction to zero. Okay, so far so good. Now we want the slime to change direction when it reaches the endpoint. So we create a new function to handle this. In this function, we just switch the end and start positions. Note that it's really important to use this temporary variable here. Otherwise, the old end position would be lost and the two positions would then end up being the same. We then go back to where the distance to the end is less than the limit. Now, because we want the slime to keep moving, we no longer want to set the move direction to zero. Instead, we call our new function here to change the direction. Setting the position to the end position won't be noticeable at all when we keep moving. So I'm also removing that from the code. And now we have a slime that's moving up and down again and again. Now it's time to update the animation. This is done very closely to how we do it for the player. We add an unready variable to access the animated sprite. We create a function to update the animation based on the slime's velocity. And then we call this function from the physics process after we move the slime. Feel free to experiment with the slime's speed and also the frames per second for the animations until you find something that you like. Now we've created the base for our very first enemy. And I could end the video here, but I still have one thing left I thought could be really fun to add here. Instead of having all the slimes move in the same direction and the same length, there's a simple way we can add some variation. In the world scene, add a marker to denote to the slime. The position of this marker will be the slime's end position. Then go to the slime script and add an exported variable and specify that the type should be a marker to D. Now go back to the world and assign the newly placed marker to the new variable on the slime. And in the code, we set the end position to be the global position of the marker. 
it's important that you use the global position here. This is the actual position in the game. The regular position is relative to the node's parent's position. And that's all for now. You can now create enemies that moves back and forth between two points. In later episodes, we will be handling collision between the player and the slime, add health to our player and much much more. Bye!